So, you finally settled on a life path, but what kind of character will you make? Stealth, melee, a headstrong gunner, or maybe a mix of everything? This video aims to dig into these options with the attributes, skills, and cyberware. Also, if you haven't actually decided on a life path, I have videos on each one to help you decide. These will be linked down below. Make sure to sub to this channel for more cyberpunk updates. Now, let's get to creating your characters. There's a lot to go over. The main points you gain from experience will be put into either of five main attribute categories. These are body, intelligence, reflexes, tech, and cool. I believe we will get points in the beginning of the game to put into these attributes, but I'm not really certain how many that'll be. Each one of these main attributes breaks down into different skill trees. You will acquire perk points to put into these. These skills will allow you to create a character that is tailored perfectly for what you want. We know there's a total of 12 skill trees. Body has three, Reflex also has three, Tech has two, as well as Intelligence and Cool. Looking at this chart, we see the basic breakdown that each of these attributes affects. Body is shotguns, two-handed weapons, melee, and athletics. Reflexes is handguns, rifles, and blades. Cool is for assassination, nerve, and snipers. Intelligence is hacking, and technical is engineering. But I was looking around the great internet and found an article from nightcitylife.de, which is a German site, and apparently someone played Cyberpunk during that last four hour session, and they remembered how the perks were distributed and what some of them actually were. In more depth, we see that body is actually an increase to health and stamina, how long that you can hold characters before they escape, shotguns, heavy weapons, heavy machine guns, blunt cut weapons, opening doors forcibly, and pulling people out of cars. So from these, we can get a better understanding of the athletics of the body perks. Apparently, pulling people out of cars is a regular thing in the cyberpunk world. Also, holding people before they escape is interesting. It kind of hints at V chasing down a lot of people, either for capture or information. And being able to hold them longer might maybe get you more information? We know the body skill trees are athletics, street brawler, and annihilation. While there weren't any specific skills for the street brawler or annihilation, we know some of the skills for the athletic tree, and these are... Gladiator, which reduces damage taken while blocking by 20%. Regeneration, slowly regenerates health in combat. Pack Mule, doubles the carrying capacity. Invincible, which increases maximum health by 10%. Superhero Landing, which reduces fall damage by 5%. Multitasker, lets you shoot while sprinting, sliding, and jumping at the same time. Transporter, lets you shoot and sprint while carrying a body. And Hard mo At the start of the fight, armor and resistance are increased by 20% for 10 seconds. These all sound very helpful in combat, especially the regeneration, invincible, and multitasker. For me personally, I don't think I'm going to go with many points in the body, maybe a few for HP and stamina, but body is going to be a vital path for players who want a high survival rate in combat, whether that's hand-to-hand -hand or gunplay. Not much is known about the intelligence skill trees besides that it was for hacking, with the two trees being for device hacking and target hacking. But here we can see that some of the skills are for solving complex problems, quick hacking, capacity of the cyber deck, and you can interact with more objects and reveal new paths in the game world. Now this sounds like an attribute to put some points into. I'm definitely going with stealth at my first run, so intelligence for me is a big one. What I like about this is the ability to interact with more objects and the ability to see new paths within the world. I believe these two stats will substantially help you when doing missions. More options is never a bad thing, especially when you're in a dangerous situation. There is also the mention of the capacity of the cyber deck. From my understanding, this allows your cyber deck to hold more hacks that you can use. I did more digging and found someone who knew about these hacks, or daemons as they're called in cyberpunk, from PCGamesN.com. There is Short Circuit, which overloads a target cyberware and deals electrical damage. There's Force Suicide, which in Cyberpunk 2077 there's something called Cyberpsychosis, which affects your behavior, and this specific daemon will cause enemies to shoot themselves with their own weapon. Reboot Optics, resets an enemy optical cyberware causing partial blindness. SOS Signal, requests a signal requesting aid from another squad member forcing the target to investigate. Overheat, deals thermal damage by overheating target cyberware and glitch weapon. Sets malfunction on a target's weapon, reducing effectiveness or forcing them to change weapon. Some of these sound so gnarly, overheat would be awful, but for suicide is for the true people with no remorse. Each one of these is very helpful and could be used in a lot of different situations. And the best part is these aren't even all of them. There is more daemons out there that we don't even know about. The one thing I would like to point out is, is we don't actually know how many we can hold even with more capacity being added. And nor do we know how many times you can actually use them, or if it's a one and done type thing. But either way, these are incredible. Even if you're making a non-stealthy character, points into intelligence could be very helpful. We have three more attributes to go through, and the next one is reflexes. Reflexes will increase speed, agility, and reaction time, evasion, critical hits, attack and movement speed, 
as well as handling rifles, hand pistols, and blades. Reflexes is the attribute for a lot of combat modifiers that will definitely help you survive in Night City. The skill trees are independently for handguns, rifles, and blades. So if you plan on using any of those weapons, you'll have to spend points here. What makes this attribute so good is the critical hit chance and the movement speed. Reflexes is definitely going to help you in gunfights around Night City. So if you want a decent chance at surviving, maybe some points in the reflexes isn't a bad idea. Tech has gone through a major change the last year within Cyberpunk's development. Originally, there was a techie class that used the Flathead robot as a partner, but the devs found it too close to the Netrunner class and scrapped the idea, as well as all the classes actually, and made a fluid class system. So now tech influences building armor and weapons, handling tech weapons, and effects in fighting mechanical opponents. You might not find these necessary, but in Cyberpunk, I'm gonna throw out a guess and say that building and modifying your own weapons and armor will be better than most of the stuff that you can find or buy. The tech attribute has two skill trees, and these are crafting and engineering. Some of the crafting skills are Master Gunsmith. Each time an item is crafted, a 5% chance of receiving an additional prototype component as a material for crafting. R&D, the aforementioned skill that enables you to upgrade items to the legendary quality level. Crazy Science is a trait, a kind of master skill at the bottom of the talent tree, which increases the sales price of your items by 25%. The R&D skill is especially valuable for leveling up any gear you have to legendary tier, which will provide added bonuses. So if you have a weapon you love in the beginning of the game, you'll be able to upgrade it to keep it relevant and very good. Now for some of the engineering skills, these are Mech Looter, you can loot junk from drones, robots, and mechs, and have a 30% chance of finding weapon parts. Blast shielding reduces your explosion damage by 10%. Shrapnel, which adds 20 additional damage to all previous grenade effects. Grenadier makes the explosion radius of grenades visible to you. Reverse engineering lets you remove weapon mods. You can't touch this. Makes yourself immune to the effects of your own grenades. The engineering skills seem to really focus on grenades and explosions specifically. The you can't touch this skill is gonna be incredible. Imagine standing in the middle of a huge group of enemies and just dropping grenades at yourself. The tech attribute does seem to be a very niche group of skills, but it will be interesting to see how the crafting items go. It could be a diamond in the rough skill. Now about the attribute cool. Cool influences critical hits and damage resistance, as well as dealing with difficult situations, how quickly you can notice an enemy while sneaking, and the effectiveness as an assassin. Cool seems like another all-rounder attribute to put some points into, especially as a stealth character. Dealing with difficult situations is also kind of intriguing, as we don't really know what's considered a difficult situation. But the added critical hits and damage resistance is very nice. The two skill trees known in cool are stealth and cold blood. The cold blood tree focuses on abilities that get buffed when V's health is below 40%. This should be good for players who like taking a lot of damage and getting stronger, kind of like the Hulk. That was a lot and we're not even done yet. Apparently the max level for attributes is level 20. So we should get some points in the beginning because 20 seems kind of low. So looking at this chart, we can actually see one of the skill trees in body, which is the athletic skill tree. Some skills have three tiers and each one increases the effectiveness of the skill. You will need certain skills to unlock other ones with the final skill at the bottom being like the ultimate skill. Now, there is a wall of sorts on these trees. You can only use as many perk points into your skills as points you have in the attribute. So say you have five points in the body attribute, you can only have a max of five skill points in any of the three skill trees at one time. I would assume this is to keep the skill trees from getting too OP in the beginning of the game. Now, you can also level up skills just by doing the thing you like. So let me explain. If you enjoy using blades such as katanas, just by using the katana, you will start to raise its stat automatically. So this will also be a way for players to increase their skills, literally just by doing whatever you like. This includes stealth. Just by being stealthy, the skill goes up. Or if you like melee, just punch a bunch of people in the face to increase your skills. Moving on to the last piece of customizing your character in Cyberpunk, the iconic cyberware. Yes, the futuristic implants that can modify your body to do incredible things. There are five tiers of cyberware, common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. And this should be the same across all items in the game. Now, there are three kinds of cyberware you can have, active, triggered, and passive. And they act just like they sound. Active cyberware will need to be activated whenever you find necessary. Triggered becomes activated under a specific criteria, and passive cyberware will always be on. We don't know many of the cyberware available, but we do know a few. There are the Mantis Blades, which is an arm cyberware which upgrades melee attacks by giving V blades that protrude from the forearm, a blood pump, a triggered cardio cyberware which improves healing, Microtors, a passive nervous system ability which improves movement speed and precision, 
Reflex Tuner, a triggered nervous system ability that activates slow motion when health drops below a certain amount. Gorilla Arms, an active arm slot upgrade that provides a melee power and strength boost. Monowire, an active arm slot upgrade provides V with a fiber optic whip which can slice enemies. Sin Lungs, a passive cardio slot ability that provides stamina regeneration. And the Karenzakov, a triggered nervous system slot provides V with slow motion after dodging an enemy. My favorites are passives and triggered, as I am very bad at remembering when to activate abilities, so the Sin Lungs, Blood Pump, and Karenzakov look best for me. But the Mantis Blades are a staple in Cyberpunk, and the Monowire seems like a killer Indiana Jones thing. If you love the melee, the Microtors paired with the Gorilla Arms will break someone's face, but the Reflex Tuner could make you Neo, like the Karenzakov, but maybe for a bit longer. All these sounds super dope and I really cannot wait to try them out, and to find all the ones that we don't even know about yet. Now the only downside to the cyberware is that there's only a certain amount of slots that we get to use. As of right now, there is 19 spaces for cyberware. The brain has three slots, there's the eyes, the cardiovascular system has three slots, the immune system two slots, peripheral nervous system has two slots, skin has three slots, operating system has one slot, and skeletal system has one slot for hands, one for arms, and one for each leg. Also, some cyberware takes up multiple slots, so we aren't actually sure how many we can have at one time. But if you want your best chance of surviving out there in Night City, more is probably better. There are so many options and so many choices to decide for your characters within Cyberpunk. Let me know in the comments what kind of character you are aiming to make. Stick around for some more videos coming up, and remember to sub for your Cyberpunk updates. If you want to chat live, you can find me on Twitch Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And until next time, remember, always take it to the edge. It's the Cyberpunk way.